right now. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, but now. For now is your time to shine. Not now, when? And what if you did it? What if you actually did it? Just for a moment, in your mind, think about how your life would be. You hit every single goal you have. You really went out there and said and did everything you said you were going to do. Here is 2005, and that's when I had my first ever public performance and my first public disaster. I started learning magic at the age of 10, this beautiful art form of magic. And ever since then, I was intrigued by it. Mostly the only place I used to perform, or rather test out my magic, was for my steady support system, my mom and dad. If I would have put it, put it this way, they were the victims. I would perform for them every single trick I learned over and over again, just so that I could get a hang of it. And because I loved performing. There were times when my mom would be taking her afternoon nap while back from work. And I would go by her bedside, wake her up, just to show her that one little card trick I learned a minute back while reading a magic book. And even though she was so exhausted, and even if she was fed up with this little boy, which she was at times, she would still have the patience to watch me perform and then pat me on my back and say, that was the most incredible trick I've ever seen. Now, please let me get some sleep. Thinking back now, I feel nothing but sorry for mom for ruining her daily little dose of snooze right before she jumped back to shows. But I was only a little boy, eager and excitement to perform magic, which I still am. Now, I still remember my first show. The year is 2005, and that's when my dad decided to offer me my first ever public performance. But way before that, before coming up on stage, my audience was any guests who came home. I used to perform for them and they got a treat because they got to witness a magician in the making. And while the guests were there, my mom would remark, show them that trick where you learn where you would vanish a coin and make it reappear inside your pocket. Or perhaps that silly little game you played where you would guess correctly which hand the coin is in. Now I hope you realized what mom did there. I'd be enraged and say, mom, why did you have to explain the entire trick while I simply was going to perform it anyway? Because that would have ruined an element of surprise. Nonetheless, I would continue to perform the same trick and still they would be awestruck. Their genuine expression of bewilderment coupled with delight would make me as a child jump in joy. And that was and still is my silent driving force. So my dad decided to offer me my first ever public performance. So there's a temple in our town and it hosts yearly festivals and this would usually last for a week or more. And there was this massive stage which used to host various cultural and entertainment programs. That was where I had my debut. There were almost, almost every single person from every household around the town would gather there to watch this because this was the first time ever they had hosted a magic show. And hence, I knew there would be a large crowd. The brochures to the event were out weeks before and I got my hands on one as well and there it was, a big bold letters, magic show, with my name printed right below it. And looking at the date, I realized it happened to be on the very first day of the festival and it was the very first event on the stage as well. Hence the hype was real. So I practiced. 
I practiced almost four to five hours every single day. And I did this as I got, got back from school. Missing out on all the playtime with my friends and all my favorite cartoon shows. Because that was my least concern. Because I knew I had to ace the show. Because I couldn't let down my dad. And this was the first show he had offered me. Hence, I practiced. Every single trick I was going to perform over and over again. Every single day. Weeks passed and the D-Day came. I suited up in my typical magic gear with a black top hat. And my dad carrying all the props, we made our way to the backstage. And I could get a glimpse of the large crowd that was forming. That heightened my anxiety. About five minutes before the show, they started the announcement. I was ready. My dad gave me a thumbs up. I gave one back. And before I knew it, the curtains were up. The music started playing. The spotlight was on me. And slowly as my eyes adjusted to the light, only to reveal a large crowd in front of me. I just realized how much of a leap this was from performing live for five people at the comfort of my home to almost 500 pairs of eyes staring at me. I took a deep breath and I said to myself, this is it. This is your time to shine. And I kicked off with my first magic effect. And even to this day, I really don't know what happened. But the first effect didn't go as planned. My opening effect had failed. The music stopped because my dad thought maybe I could restart it over again. And he started the music again from the beginning. But I had already dropped my first one and was working on my second. And since I had practiced with the music track, with each crescendo hitting perfectly for every magic effect, the music was lagging behind while I was always one step ahead. That, and because of the nervousness, the second effect failed. So did the third and the fourth and subsequent ones. It all came crashing down like a domino, one after the other. All I wanted to do at that point was to just drop everything and run off stage. And my dad, like every other dad, he had the sixth sense and he knew exactly what I was going to do. And before it got any worse, he dropped the curtains, switched off the music, and I ran off stage to my dad with tears in my eyes, crying. And he hugged me in his arms and said, Son, it's okay. You did your best. There's always a next time. There's always a next time. You see, when I think of that image in my mind, I am reminded of this beautiful quote from my all-time favorite movie. Why do we fall, sir? So that we can learn to pick ourselves up. It's the ever-famous quote from Batman Begins, which happened to have released the exact same year, but I hadn't seen the movie, nor had I heard of Christopher Nolan back then. But I was certain I heard something very similar by dad whispered in my ear in Malayalam. That resonated in my mind. And for almost one year, I didn't perform on stage. For almost one year. Not because I feared getting up on stage. No, it wasn't me. And that wasn't that. It was only because I was practicing, preparing putting together an act so, so that I could come back on stage. And I wanted to come back on stage that too with a bang, which I did. I was up on that same stage where I failed exactly a year later, wearing the same outfit, the black top hat, for the same festival. But this time, one thing was different. This time, the expectations were low, but my preparation was high. The curtains went up, the music started playing, the spotlight was on me, and I reached inside only to pull out a yellow silk and boom. 
And that was the exact same trick I did 16 years back. And that was the exact same reaction I got. I went on to perform, I went on to perform my second magic effect, then the third, then the fourth, acing every single one after the other. Like an ascending domino. And before I knew it, I ended the entire show in a standing ovation from the crowd. The curtains dropped, the music stopped, and I ran off stage to my dad. And he hugged me in his arms and said, Son, you did it. And I could see his face getting mixed with emotions of proudness, happiness. And my mom was there too, in the crowd, watching me, smiling back at me. That was my first taste of success. Fast forward to now, I am invited to perform for multinational companies, campus and corporate crowds, and for international conferences. All this wouldn't have happened if I hadn't experienced what it is like to fail at such early in life. I would like to invite someone on stage, an audience member on stage. Yeah, you, you As quick as you can. Uh, so you just witnessed my past of being a magician, which I still am. But as my audience grew, I started performing something different. Something which I call an advanced form of magic, rather the dubious art of pretending to read someone's thoughts. Your name? Elena. Elena. Okay. Now it's only fair. For those of you watching it on social media, and for the skeptics out there, I know who you are. It's only fair to ask you, we haven't prearranged anything, correct? And I'm meeting you for the first time today, yeah? And unfortunately, we don't have a relationship between each other, right? Yet. So a picture is worth a thousand words, but a memory is priceless. Elena, was it? Elena. Elena, I want to look at me right now and just sleep, right the way down. Right the way deep, right the way sound is the sinking and drifting and floating in the state of mind. The sinking, drifting, floating, spiraling in the state of mind. Taking all the time you need to do this. Now you can hear what I'm saying perfectly. It's just that you can do this more perfectly so that you can yes, right the way deep, right the way down, sound is deep. Sinking and drifting. And what I want you to do is to imagine, is to visualize in your mind, flooding back of those childhood memories. And in your mind, I want you to think, in your mind, think of the first person you had a crush on, the first person you had a crush on. Now, uh, now I don't want this to be a celebrity because that's too easy to guess, but someone who I wouldn't know, someone not even your closest friends would know, someone in your mind right now. Now, as you visualize this person in your mind, nothing out loud, I want you to imagine this him, this person, him, it's a him, right? So, right, him standing right here in front of you. And as you bring his picture a little bit closer, I want you to imagine that name, shouting out that name in your mind, nothing out loud, not even moving a muscle, just in your mind. Slowly whispering that name in your mind, not moving a muscle. Now, Elena, you're doing great. I want you to stay there. In your mind, not moving a muscle, just to repeat that name over and over again, letter by letter, in your mind, just whispering it to yourself over and over again. Now, for the rest of you, Elena, you're doing great. Stay right there. For the rest of you, I, I think this might be it, but not, not, maybe not this exactly. Maybe something similar sounding. If not this, something sounding very similar. 
I wanted to repeat it over and over again in your mind. Nothing out loud. It's a bit difficult because there's only one vowel in the beginning. But Lena, I wanted to do this. Take all the time you need to reorientate yourself back to the room. Take all the time you need to come back to us. Right? You can open your eyes. You good? Bit weird, right? Yeah. Now, Mike. Out loud, in your nice and clearest voice, in your nice and clearest public speaking voice to them out loud, what was the name of your first crush? Adityan. Adityan. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alina. Thank you so much for joining me. You can head back right there. So, thank you so much. You did great. Now, having did this, I have to say something. Now, if you fail in life, the most, if you fail, the most stupidest thing you could do is to, is to quit. You see, first comes the dream, then comes the struggle, then there's victory. Now, most, the problem is most people give up during the struggle, never knowing how close they were to victory. You have to fail in order to succeed in life. Now, I wouldn't be here giving you this TED Talk, sharing you my hard experiences in my life up to what I am now, if I hadn't failed in life. So this is for you. If you feel you have been failing too much, if you feel you've been failing in your exams, maybe at your job, or maybe life in general, just keep going because you really don't know how close you are to victory. And for me, being a magician, I think anything and everything is possible. Life isn't magical as it is, but you make it magical. Because you, every one of you, you are the magician and it's your time to shine. Thank you.